Table number two is sequence alignment. Which, needless to say, is a fundamental problem in computational genomics. For example, when my colleague uh, Serafine Batsiglou teaches his CS262 class, uh, the first three lectures of the class are devoted entirely to this problem. Okay? So what is the problem? Well, I'm going to describe it to you sort of in stages, uh, but the input is easy to explain. So you're given two strings. No prizes for guessing the alphabet. Okay, so two sequences of letters drawn from ACGT. So for example, perhaps the input to this algorithmic problem would be the strings A, G, G, C, T. That would be the first one. And A, G, G, C, A. Okay, that's one input you might receive. <laughs> now given this input, what output do I want? Okay, what problem do I want you to solve? Oh yeah, so what are these, I should say? Um, so these are, yeah. So these are portions of one or more g genomes. portions of genomes. All right. So, what is your job? Okay, well it's going to take me a couple steps to define it super precisely, but intuitively, what you need to do in a sequence alignment problem is figure out, you know, are these strings more or less the same, or are they pretty different? Okay, so figure out how similar the two strings are to each other. This is not something, so this is underdefined, right? You could not just sit down and write a computer program to solve this problem because I haven't explained what I meant by similar. So we gotta do that. Okay, we gotta say what we mean by similar before we can talk about for, them for, for computing it, solving this problem. So let's think intuitively. Like, look at this input. Look at these two strings. They're not identical, right? They're not the same string. It's not the same string twice. But would you say, you know, it's more, they're more or less similar? Why do you say not similar? The bottom has fewer uh, sequence portions the True. And it doesn't have a key. It's also true. So that's the way in which it's different than the first one. I totally agree. Okay? So what have you kind of thought, you know, uh, by sort of, uh, you know, what have you thought about these strings as sort of evolving over time? You know, like they kind of, they kind of, you know, either there's uh, some chemical process going on, or maybe, um, you know, there's mutations or something like this. How many steps? Is it going to take a lot of steps or a few steps to get from one to the other? <laughs> yeah, it kind of seems like um, they're not the same. So they're definitely not the same. But on the other hand, you're like, well, you know, over time, you just kind of had a single deletion from this one and then a single mutation. You could imagine kind of a, a, a short, relatively process by which you get from one to the other. Okay? So that could be an argument in the other way. Again, so I, I should say, there's no right answer to this question, because I haven't told you what similar means. All right? so, so it's not like yes is right, it's not like no is right. We're just trying to think about it and figure out what might it, what might it mean to say if they are or are not similar. All right? So arguments against are they have different lengths. You know, one is sort of has a letter that the other one doesn't. An argument for it kind of seems like you could transform one to the other pretty quickly. Okay? So let me, let, me go with the, let me go with the second route and try and develop that a little bit more rigorously. Okay? All right, so it turns out in computational genomics, one would think of these two strings as being pretty close. And that's because they really do care about this kind of, you know, how many steps would you need to get from one to the other. So how are we going to quantify that? Here's the idea. We're 
we're going to define similarity. Again, this is not going to be mathematical yet. We're going to define it as the quality of the best alignment. Okay, so the idea is, given two strings, if we can line them up so they almost match, we're going to call the two strings similar. If there's no way to line them up so that they almost match, we're going to call them dissimilar. Okay? Again, this still is underdefined. I haven't told you what best means. Okay, but that's the idea. They're similar if and only if there exists a good alignment of the two strings. Okay? So, again, just going with the intuition, um, so these two strings we would say are pretty similar um, because they can be pretty nicely aligned. How would you do that? Well, you just write down the longer one. So as was pointed out, the, the second one actually is missing a letter. It's, it has only five characters. So we'd have to insert a gap somewhere. And moreover, the other problem is that we get a mismatch in the last column. Okay, but intuitive, again, I haven't told you what best is, so there's no way to even verify this is the best alignment. But just without, you know, being too precise about it, it seems like if you were, if you were, if someone, you know, forced you to align the two strings so that they look, so that they match up as well as possible, this might be what you'd do. And again, the blemishes of this alignment are, first of all, you have to insert a gap to equalize the lengths. And second of all, you have one mismatch. Well, yeah, you know, maybe that's not so bad. You know, on the other hand, four out of six columns, we nailed it. If they're just totally random strings, you wouldn't expect that to happen. 